we have a number of different pictures in the in scripture of who Jesus is. And every one of them is important, but no one of them captures completely who Jesus is. So we have pictures of Jesus as a lion and as a lamb and as a warrior and as a shepherd. I think it's time, and I'm going to show you this from scripture as well because I'm not making this up because if we go back to God's, John's gospel, we're going to see Jesus say this about God specifically. But I think it's time to add another picture that we modern evangelicals don't often think about, and that is not just Jesus as lion, lamb, warrior, and shepherd, but also Jesus as gardener. God as a gardener. John, back to the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 1. Jesus says this about the Father. So this is right in Scripture. Jesus talking about who the Father is. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. We could actually, the Greek there could be translated gardener, farmer, tiller of the soil. That's literally what it means. And my Father is the gardener. This brings up something else that has lots to do with how we live and our attitude in the world today. The, if the one we are following is not just a soldier, see, your picture of what the Christian life is going to be is going to have a huge impact on the attitude and the perspective, the bent you take into the world every day when you go to work and how you interact with people. And just like there's a number of different pictures of Jesus in the scripture, there's a number of different pictures of the church and of the Christian life, okay? The Christian life and the church are, you know, are compared to a family, a bride, a body, an army. You know, the Christian life is sometimes referred to as a war. But here's the thing we have to understand. No one of those pictures captures the whole Christian life. And here's the thing. If you only focus on one of them, you're going to get your life out of whack. And this is what I think we are seeing the fruit of here in North America right now with evangelical Christians. And that is this. I think as evangelical Christians, we have focused too much on just one of the pictures without balancing them out with all the others. And I think we have overly focused on the Christian life is a war and the church is an army and we as Christians are soldiers. Now, those are actually biblical pictures, okay? And in fact, the most powerful spiritual warfare passage in Scripture, Ephesians 6, you know, we have this whole picture of spiritual warfare. But the interesting thing I find in that Scripture is, is that Paul specifically says in that Scripture that we are not to fight against people. It's only against spiritual forces of darkness. But we have so focused on the Christian life as a war, and I, fi- I feel like now it's kind of like this idea, you know, that, that old saying, when you think of yourself as a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. And I feel like as Christians, we've come to see ourselves as soldiers, and the fruit of that, not just in one little area spiritually or in terms of leading a disciplined life and resisting sin, But we've come to see ourselves as soldiers. And so what's the fruit, you know, without balancing that out with these other pictures. And so what we have today is a Christian, you know, Christian churches that fight, fight, fight. We fight with each other. We fight with the government. We fight with the school system. We're just, we're fighting on social media against the culture. We fight against, I mean, you name it. And there's Christians who are fighting against it. And it's not that all fighting is bad. But like I said before, when you think of yourself as a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. The crazy thing is we call ourselves Christians, Christians. We're supposed to be like Jesus. And when Jesus came, he didn't fight. He died. Do you know that Jesus is called a lion in the New Testament exactly how many times? Once. Do you know how many times he's called the Lamb of God or the Lamb? More than a dozen. And I think we need to get this picture not just of Jesus as a warrior, but as Jesus as a shepherd and a gardener, and also us as Christians to go back to our original mandate from Genesis chapter 2, which is that we are gardeners. We're not just soldiers. There's a time to fight. But actually, we're called, more importantly, to make the world a better place. What does a gardener do? They go out every day, and it's messy. Is life messy? Absolutely. 
but they don't mind getting their hands messy. And Jesus doesn't mind getting his hands messy. And we tend to the good. We try to pull out the weeds and we tend to good. We tend to justice. We tend to integrity. We tend to kindness. I think if we reclaim the Genesis 2 gardening mandate for humanity, we will finally have a theology that makes sense of what God wants us to do in our Christian lives. The world is God's garden, and we are meant to go out into it and bring order and beauty and fruitfulness and goodness from the world in the realms of business and sports and education and medicine and family and on and on and on. Are you more of a gardener or are you more of a soldier? I feel like the Holy Spirit is calling many of us to take up the mantles of gardening in our world today. Thanks for watching. Jesus is a gardener and I so hope you are encouraged to take his love and justice and goodness out into the world and everything you do. If you want to watch the rest of this message, click on the link here. And we'd love to see you at Crossview Church every week, Sunday morning at our services, 10 a.m. Central Time. Don't forget to like and subscribe so more people can hear the message.